percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, Tor Fires Group, let's get right into today's second episode. Absolutely crazy. Yes, the head of the IMF did indeed just say they're going to introduce a new currency. What do I mean by that? Well, take a listen to this clip. Does this sound like a slip up to you? The tremendous liquidity we have in the world that is sitting idle and then have a new, hopefully, up, up, upswing. Um, uh whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's take a pause there for a moment. An upswing? She was, you know, juggling her words, but it does sound like she was about to say, have a new currency. The tremendous liquidity we have in the world that is sitting idle and then have a new hopefully up, up, up swing. Um, uh, and let's just put a quick little mashup of what's really happening. The tremendous liquidity we have in the world that is sitting idle and then have a new, hopefully up, up, up swing. Um, um, some are talking about a way to stimulate inflation, um, uh, uh, San by having that investment momentum that makes the liquidity moving a little bit faster. For Ripple, we use this digital asset called XRP to settle, to, to settle liquidity needs between banks. So today there's $27 trillion parked at different banks around the world so they can make payments between each other. Our view is you can use a digital asset like XRP to do that in real time. Because XRP has been so efficient, it settles a transaction about three seconds compared so to Bitcoin So it just passes through that currency for that period of time. That one is more complicated. It has to do with liquidity. So imagine that you have a pair of currencies for which there is not a, a complementary demand. You need to go and uh, search for a third party uh, uh, currency in order to make this, uh, this settlement actually happen. And this really complicates things. Uh, so we need to put pieces of technology that can uh, make more efficiency this use of liquidity so that more transactions can be settled. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second episode for today. This one's gonna be absolutely insane. Let's set the tone. Listen to what Jeremy Allaire says here. Global use of stable coins, is it more prudent to implement a global regulatory framework or adhere to country specific regulations? I'm happy to jump in on that. I, I mean, the reality is um, there is a global framework. The Financial Stability Board, which is the body of the G20 central banks, finance ministries, came up with a set of recommendations for stablecoin policy and the G20 adopted it. And now the members of the G20, their financial ministries and regulators are taking those globally agreed upon policy standards and putting them into law. He's acknowledging the FSB and how they are a big deal and how they laid out a roadmap that everybody is following, which is the G20 roadmap. I mean, they're acknowledging it in India as well. And FSB is also setting the contours of the regulatory framework for a globally coordinated approach to crypto assets. This is a globally coordinated implementation, but listen to what they said in this G20 roadmap. The success of this work will depend heavily on the commitment of public authorities and the private sector working together. Their collective effort and actions will be required in order to implement the agreed changes in the coming years and to achieve the targets that have been set. For the roadmap, central banks must improve their own core payment systems and through enable the private sector that often relies on their systems to follow suite. That is so massive. And they're pretty much just telling you right in front of your face. And when we get into the roadmap, that which they perfectly, you know, put in Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and we covered this, we're gonna go over this quickly if you guys are new to the channel, but this gives me the goosebumps every single time. Um, this roadmap, the G20 roadmap, where the, everyone is following, 
explored liquidity bridges on November 2021. And just gonna scratch the surface here. If we take a look at XRP scan on Sunday of November 21st of 2021, everything spiked in number of transactions executed, number of currency exchanges, payments, successful payments, and ticket created was implemented. And that was a big deal, which we covered on a previous video. But with this roadmap, you really can't make things up. Like this is boom, ladies and gentlemen. And listen to what they said here as well. For instance, the targets of lowering the global average cost of cross-border retail payments to 1% or ensuring that recipients receive the funds within one hour by the end of 2027 will require ongoing public and private sector commitment, as well as substantial upgrades of the underlying payment infrastructure. At the same time, development of new payment systems and arrangements may contribute to improvements required. Wow, substantial upgrades of the underlying payment infrastructure. And that is what Ripple is doing behind the scenes along with other companies. But Ripple is at the highest level. I mean, just given their regulatory clarity across the world. And keep in mind, I'm going to say this again. It makes absolutely no sense for Bitcoin to be deemed not a security because we don't know who the issuer is. Again, in the future, we could see a, I mean, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, but it just doesn't make sense. And you know, Satoshi's identity in the future will be revealed. It makes just zero sense for this magic money to appear out of nowhere. And we don't know who the issuer is. And referring to what Jeremy Lair said to finish it off, this is what he was referring to regulation, supervision, and oversight of global stablecoin arrangements. This was the final report in high level recommendations. Listen to what they said here. Before launching the arrangements and the provision of services to users in a particular jurisdiction, entities and individuals involved in the management and control of the global stablecoin arrangement intending to engage in global stablecoin functions and activities should make themselves aware of regulatory requirements that apply, where regulation of more than one jurisdictions may apply. They should have themselves aware of which jurisdiction rules are applicable to different aspects of the functions and activities. And this is where, you know, Speculation, okay, but whatever you want to call it, listen to David. We have the technology to allow every financial institution on the planet to settle with every other financial institution in a compatible jurisdiction in any asset in seconds for less than a penny. Just, just think about this. You, you, anyone who's made a payment knows that we're nowhere near that today. But imagine every financial institution settling with every other financial institution in seconds for less than a penny, any asset. That's fundamentally transformative. We have the technology to do it. Now we just need to figure out how to drive the adoption. And that is why we covered in the previous videos where, you know, SBI, Circle, USDC, everybody just coming together. You just, you know, it's everything is falling into place. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate every single one of you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And we will be back with another video. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. <laughs> I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.